All right, so now that we've spent a little bit of time looking at weapons, let's see if we can make our screen look a little nicer. Now, previously in this volume of the XNA Extreme class, we created a Starfield system, if you will. In this video, we will be integrating that Starfield system into Space Fighter. All right, well, let's get started. And the thing that we need to point out first is the fact that this code does indeed already exist. As you just mentioned, we have written a Starfield system, and we're simply going to be integrating that system into Space Fighter. Now, the two key classes of the Starfield system are Starfield and Multilayer Starfield. Now, we also have access to the original game class that went with the Starfield test application. The reason being is we, were, we will use this to grab all of the presets that gave our test Starfield. Now, to get started in Space Fighter, the very first thing we're going to do is go into our Space Fighter project and make a new folder for it. In categorizing how the Starfield should be treated, we decided that it would be best to place it in its own category as it's not really a, key, a core engine component and it doesn't affect the gameplay, so we decided to make a category called Background. So into the... Oh, S to a D. Yep. So we'll have a Background folder, and we can take our Starfield and our Multilayer Starfield classes and simply drag those over into Background. And that very quickly gets the code in place. Now, in order to use these, we do need to keep in mind that these came directly from the Starfield test application. That means if we open them up, we can see that their namespace is Starfield test, and everything we've created so far is meant to be inside of Space Fighter. So we'll change this namespace over to Space Fighter, so that later in the game class we can easily access these without changing using statements. So that is Starfield, and multi-layer Starfield will have their namespace changed to Space Fighter, just like every other class that has existed so far. Now, we need to get all of the original parameters that made our example star field. What I mean by that is if we take a look at the original star field game class, to look at that, what I'm going to do is I've got a, a blank solution in Visual Studio. I'm going to simply drop that code file in place so we can look at the original star field test game class. And this block of code described a series of fields used to describe parameters for a star field. The resolution, density, speed, color, and layer count for the overall field. These are the things that we want to use inside of Space Fighter, so we'll copy each of those fields, go into Space Fighter, but of course in Space Fighter we have an official configuration class. So we'll paste all of those in to the bottom of the configuration class. To use these properly, we need to proceed them with the public static modifiers. So we'll simply change each individual field to public static version of the original field. We'll go through and name these appropriately. We'll use capital letters at the beginning of each to go along with the fact that they are indeed publicly accessible fields. One final thing you'll note is that we're using the color type. Color type is not highlighting in teal, indicating that it's not a recognized type. As a matter of fact, if we try to build, we will actually get a compiler error in the fact that that type could not be found. To fix that, we can simply add in a using statement for xna.framework.graphics to our configuration class, and that will give us access to the color type, allowing us to build with no problems. Now, screen height and screen width are named differently. Those were the original constants from the Starfield project. And in our case, they are screen height and screen width with different capitalizations, as those are no longer constants. Those are simply integer fields. So replacing the names for screen height and screen width means we can once again build. So at this point, you could say we have imported the classes. We've got the classes properly in place. We have parameters to describe a known result for a star field. Now we can set up an actual star field inside of the Space Fighter game class. Let's move down to game one for Space Fighter. And let's go all the way up to the top. And let's make a new field just after our sprite font. Let's make a multi-layer multi -layer star field. We'll simply call this star field. And we'll grab some spelling so that that is indeed star field and not start field. Now let's move down into load content where we can instantiate the star field itself. 
So let's jump in maybe just after we run load content for our sprite sheet and let's instantiate the star field. So star field will be equal to a new instance of multi-layer star field and all the necessary parameters will be given by the values we have placed into config. Except, of course, for the first, which is the need for a graphics device, as multi-layer star field creates a set of its own textures. So we can simply feed in graphics device from the game itself. Now, the rest of the parameters are going to go fairly far off screen, so I'm actually going to go line by line to specify the different parameters. So we can jump down and tab over some, so we can specify width, height, density, and so on. Width will be given by the value of config dot starfield resolution x. Height will be given by config dot starfield resolution y. Density will be given by config dot starfield density. Speed will be given by config dot starfield speed. Color will be config dot star field color. And finally, layer count will be config dot star field layer count. So with each of the respective configuration values plugged into the constructor for multi-layer star field, the only thing that is left to be done is to make sure we make a call to draw the star field for each draw call inside of the game itself. So we want to draw the star field before any of our sprites are drawn. As a matter of fact, before anything is drawn because we want the star field to be behind everything. So right before we draw all of our nodes, we'll make a call to starfield.draw and draw is going to require an instance of sprite batch, the current game time, and the width and height that the star field should be drawn to. So we'll give a width and height of config.screen width and config.screen height to draw the star field at the full visible resolution of the screen. Now if all of these things in place, let's build and ensure that there are no errors, and then we're free to run and test. Hey, hey. Now as we run the game, we have the existing familiar actors but we have the original star field in the background. So I would say that is working very nicely. Excellent. It adds a lot, too. <laughs> exactly. It adds something. It adds depth to the background and gives a more visually appealing result. Okay. Well, that's everything we set out to do in this video, basically integrate the star field system that we had previously created in this volume. With that, that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.